Manned Spacecraft Center, who loves to tinker with this kind of thing. And this little compact box allows you to do what in 1G takes four different fluids with rinses in between, uh, a big sink, the, the typical sink in the laboratory is all stained blue and yellow and green because these stains are... Okay, if you'll excuse the extremely cumbersome communications rig, which we use only for television shows, uh, on ordinary occasions we use our speaker boxes, which allow us not to be encumbered by a wire and a headset. Let me give you what is in our television book as SPT or science pilot highlights. I'm the science pilot on this mission, and my distinction is going to turn out to be that I will be the first American physician to go 28 days in space without having to use his doctor's kit. We have a rather compact and rather elegant little doctor's office here, which is designed to allow me or a properly trained pilot to diagnose and treat with whatever help is required from the ground any illness that you can have treated in a doctor's office. Uh, as I hinted, we've been remarkably free from illness on this flight. I suppose the next flight uh, will have a, a belly ache or a sore throat or something since they don't have a physician on board. But I have played with my equipment because one of the objectives of it was to make a first cut at demonstrating what can be done in space in the weightless environment and in limited space and with, of course, very limited personnel. I don't even have a receptionist, and I have to use Captain Conrad as my nurse, and he's not very pretty. So let me go over what we've got here. In the top kit, we have drugs. The way they're supplied for launch, we have tin cans, Excuse me, this is one of my salt crystal experiments. Tin cans containing all the drugs and capsules packed so that they'll be well preserved for each mission. And we have a different slot for each flight. Now the drugs for our mission, I have taken out of there and have brought down here to the in-use drug drawer where we have three handy shelves where we keep our little bottles of pills. And I'll show you a close-up of one of these later on. Because getting pills out of the bottle at zero G without all the pills getting out is a problem. And we have a pretty good fix for that. Also in a big can, and I'm not going to open it because it's sterile, is a minor surgery kit. I'm not going to open it because I can't get it out of the drawer. This is folds out into a big uh, white envelope sort of a thing. And in all the little inserts in the envelope are the tools that I need to sew up a minor cut, stop bleeding, that sort of thing. Nothing major. I can take my stitches out and so on. In this little niche, uh, and part of it is up top, is a piece of emergency equipment that we just thought we might need in case of a uh, surgical abdomen, an appendicitis, a uh, severe uh, case of uh, diarrhea, something of that kind, uh, we might need to give the patient intravenous fluids. And uh, all of you know that have been in a hospital, uh, intravenous fluids are fairly simple to give. You hang the bottle up on a stand and the fluid runs down the tube into the needle, which you insert into the patient's arm. We got a problem. We don't have any downhill. And uh, a number of solutions were proposed. The least expensive and simplest, and one of the more effective ones, was this one, which is simply a great big inflatable cuff into which you can slip a bag of fluid. This is the fluid in a soft plastic bag, such as many hospitals use. This is the cuff, and when we get the fluid inside the cuff, in order to administer it, you just pump on this little blood pressure cuff type air pump. You exert pressure on the bottle, and the fluid runs into the patient. This is another thing we haven't had to use, and I hope we don't, but just in case, we've got it. Let me 
stuff it back up in there where Captain Bean can find it. We'll go on past the hill locker down to our fun laboratory. And this is where the SPT, that's me, using his SPT's manual every evening after dinner, gets out his microscope or his slide stainer and plays. And I play at finding out whether or not a little microscope like this goes out of adjustment at zero G, whether or not it can be usefully used to count blood cells, to examine bacteria, uh, stain smears, uh, that sort of thing. Uh, to do essentially minor laboratory work, and I find that it's very useful. This is a small compact microscope, which has, however, got three lenses, including an oil immersion 1000 magnification lens. Uh, it's got an eyepiece, it's got a mirror, a self-contained light source, a condenser, and a place to put the slides. And in another compartment, we even have a, uh, uh, a portable stage on which the slide can be smoothly moved when doing cell counts. That's very nice. We have a, a very ingenious slide stainer that was designed by one of those working geniuses at the Manned Spacecraft Center who loves to tinker with this kind of thing. And this little compact box allows you to do what in 1G takes four different fluids with rinses in between, uh, a big sink that the typical sink in the laboratory is all stained blue and yellow and green because these stains are, are uh, very strong and they dirty things up. And this guy has done it in one clean compact unit where you put the slide in this little chamber with a rubber diaphragm around the business end of it. And then by pushing buttons and turning knobs, you make the different solutions run through the chamber. And I've stained red cells, and I've also stained bacteria using the slide stainer, and it's been quite effective. Curve, huh. it is compact, it is very tight. One of the problems with it is that there's so much here that it takes a little time to dig out what you want. These kits contain the equipment that we need to draw blood, and to do the different tests on it, including the microscopic analysis, <clears throat> and to do the same with throat swabs or cultures of any part of the body where you suspect an evil microorganism might lurk. And our fourth and last drawer contains more kits, a bandage kit, a treatment kit that has things like band-aids and uh, tracheotomy kit. These are for the... Uh, very severe, out of the ordinary things. Again, it's got syringes. I could either administer drugs or I could pump somebody's stomach out if he accidentally got some poison in there. Uh, and it's got our little handy diagnostic kit with a stethoscope and a blood pressure cuff, exam uh, instruments for examining the uh, eyes and the ears. And I've gone through this. We've had sick call on the troops, and they've had their physical examinations about once a week. Uh, we found nothing out of the ordinary. That is, we found no disease. We found some rather interesting out of the ordinary things. Uh, we have a brief peek at the diagnostic kit here. The stethoscope and the blood pressure cuff I will not show you because they're over in the experiment area where we use them to back up the automatic system should it fail. These handy little carpenter's glasses or watchmaker's glasses are principally useful for examining eyes. Someone has a foreign body in his eye. Uh, however, you can also look closely at skin. You can extract splitters with it and so forth. Funny looking thing, but it works. And uh, each item in the kit, as you see, has its own little compartment and its own little door and its little Velcro strip because the one problem you have up here is zero G, you can't put something down on a table. You put it down, it floats away. You have to secure it and restrain it. And uh, that's one of the little practical headaches that has to be overcome. The other headaches are exemplified by handling the microscope and handling the slide stainer. Anything that involves handling fluids and this would include surgery up here in space. Simply has to be very carefully thought out and very carefully designed to keep the fluids trapped at all times. Otherwise, they have a mind and an existence of their own up here. 
Well, this is my doctor's office. As I said, it hasn't been used much, except for testing everything out. Uh, I sincerely hope that the rest of Skylab goes by without any of these things having to be used. But if they do, we have trained pilots up here, competent physicians on the ground, and just enough equipment to do the job.